Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. I'm Chemda. Keithandthegirl.com slash feedback. We be, get your feedback live immediately. MJG writing in. Chemda. Yes. Did, did you see that Mike Guild posted a reminder about his open mic tonight at QED? Quote, five minutes to do whatever you want unless it's assault the owner. I refuse to let that happen two weeks in a row. Oh, he's going to refuse to let that happen. He's on the case. Good job. Frank Liotti is today's, hero. is today's guest. How you doing, Frank Liotti? I'm okay. I'm okay. Thanks for having me. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. <laughs> right? That's it's what over. we say, right? Happy Pride. That's did you, what you say. That's what you say. <laughs> <laughs> Mazel on Pride. Happy Pride. Did you take advantage of the month? You know what? I haven't gone out on the day in years, like maybe seven or eight years, and I did go out for a few drinks that night. Okay. I did. I did, I did. It was fun. I forgot how much fun it is to be abusive to oneself. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, during one of your stand-up sets, you were mm-hmm. talking about meth, how good it was. That yeah. it's like, I believe you oh, said, old. Yeah. fresh bacon up the nose. <laughs> did I? Something to that effect, yeah. It, oh, I think I think that was his cocaine joke was bacon up the nose. Know. I don't know. But meth, <laughs> yes, that was a long time ago. Somebody I was going out with um, named David Fredericks... Gave me meth out of a contact lens case. Oh, that's so nice that you shout him out. Yeah, I yeah, am. absolutely. That's obviously that is the real name. Credit where credit is due. Um, I mean, you know. And is was, it the, was it the best? It was literally like having no emotional baggage ever at all. No, it was. I was like, this is what it's supposed to feel like if one is not a comic. Like if one is not emotionally <laughs> crippled. Right. Now here's the here's the question. Oh, I great. really mean this question. Okay. Do you realize how much emotional baggage you have un- before it actually goes away? <laughs> Does that make sense? I felt a severe difference in like I didn't feel cracky or high. God knows what I like the eyes were probably cocked out of the skull and in two different directions and the jaw like my teeth probably looked like I don't know, like that Timmy character on South Park with like the crooked tip. Like I probably look like a monstrosity, but I felt like I was more together than I've ever been. But did you think you were together before you did it? No, I always no. knew that I wasn't. That's why I was always a creative. I always knew that something was very off yeah. emotionally. I always knew. I didn't always know that. I developed an awareness of it as I got older and people would be like, you're so sensitive, calm down. You know. Isn't that nice? You're so sensitive. Calm, calm down. Calm down. You know, first of all, <laughs> you're so sensitive, so diagnosis. And then calm down. Medicine. Cure. Yeah. Medicine <laughs> slash cure. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. So that's, it's, it's, it's good two statements to tell people who are upset. What makes you stop doing meth? What makes you stop doing meth? I always had the fear of God in me about drugs, but I, for whatever reason... I wasn't born with the disease of addiction. You know, I have friends that are in the clutches of it, and it is, I had, one of my closest friends is an addict, and one of my closest friends had schizophrenia, mental illness, schizoaffective disorder. And it's very easy to look at those two different illnesses as non-illnesses. It's very easy to say to someone who's schizophrenic, get out of the house, take a shower, get a job, get it together. And when they're hearing something like, turn the television towards the wall, like they can't get out of the house. And the same thing is so with an addict. It's this life fuel, I guess. And I don't have that when it comes to... For anything or when it comes to... I mean, I have problems with food. I used to love cigarettes. I I have lots of other things. Like I, I really, I have messed up relationships with men. And I'm in an 11 year relationship. And I said I have messed up relationships with men, plural, present tense. Um, like, but sexually or just, you know, in social situations? You know what? Like, you know how they have AA, NA, Overeaters Anonymous? They have something called love sex addiction. And I, if I were going to go to a meeting, it would be that. Not sex addiction, love sex addiction. What it, does that mean? It's like the flirting and the carrying on and texting and, you know, little making little pictures and photographs and... Did you have to? Does your partner understand this? That you're no, he doesn't understand anything. He doesn't even know what a laptop is. <laughs> so, it's like a folded piece of paper. Does he catch you cheating on him? No, not at all. He well, doesn't know what a he thinks a podcast is like a plant. He doesn't know what this is. He will never hear this. I said that. At the, I said that at the gay pride show that Libby found me at. I said um, the best way to keep a relationship, twelve year relationship, is you cheat. That's how it works. But do do you actually count it as cheating? <laughs> no, because it's been platonic since 2007, and I really, really, really gave it my all to work on it. I really like backed off and was gentle and was like, okay, if he doesn't want to go there, let's not go there sexually. Then I tried kind of being a little more assertive. Then I went back to the gym and got buff. 
then eventually I said, if we don't work on this, I'm going to cheat. And he just can't work on it. Oh, so physically, you just you need this love from other people. You, you're not flirting with your is it no, husband? Uh, no, it's not. And okay. it's been 12 years. It's not. Is no, that a- I refuse to get married. No, it's not. It's <laughs> not. Because, I mean, the thing is, if I'm going to sleep with somebody and we're going to be back to back, we have stuff to take care of before we get married. What that's, do you mean? That's how I look at it. Mm-hmm. In other words, if, if, if they can put a nanny cam in our bedroom and show whatever they film on Nickelodeon and it'll be fine, then I'm not going to marry that person. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Oh, you yes. want some sex before you commit. <laughs> I mean, I don't just want sex. I want to be hanging from the ceiling fan. I want it to, I, seriously, I want the neighbors to bang on all ceiling, floor, and sides if I'm going to commit my life to somebody. Why isn't that happening? I don't know. Has there ever been sex? Mm, not really. The dog kind of licked the ass. The do- the, that dog was, my dog died last week, and that little motherfucker was so good in bed. I said that on stage last <laughs> oh night at God. Chemistry. You would have told the audience that I told them they all had Alzheimer's. <laughs> like, I was kidding. Obviously, I did not sleep with my chihuahua. There wasn't enough peanut butter. <laughs> I saw that on the cover of Spin, L7. Oh, I don't want to talk about it. They, they had, like, brown Labrador retrievers between their legs, all four of the girls from L7, <laughs> on the cover of Spin magazine. And they talked about peanut butter in the article. He's he's cringing a little bit. Mm-hmm. Holy shit! Yeah, I so mean, you want something between peanut butter and nothing? No, I don't want dogs at all in that sense. <laughs> My point is, like the dog, the dog kind of replaced intimacy for so many years for the two ah. of us. We had like this child. Mm. I don't know if that's a common gay relationship thing. I think it can be a universal thing. Two of my friends can't have children, a heterosexual couple, and their animals Ew, are really... Man. I know, it's, it's, uh, you have to try and open your mind to it and accept that's them. True. And that's true, thank you for the reminder. It makes me want to vomit if uh, I see them touching in public, God. but, you know, it's they, a I new think they world. do it on purpose. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, it's weird, because on, on Gay Pride Day, I did feel a little hostility when I would see, like, the hats with a baby carriage. This is my day. Get off the street. <laughs> the hats. <laughs> the hats. The children with wooden toys and little baby Mark Jacobs <laughs> socks and outfits. Have you ever tried to jumpstart? I've tried everything. Sex? Like oh, with him? Yeah, finger no, the asshole. No, at this point, we're like, <laughs> spit on it, you know, call him boy and I'm the daddy. <laughs> Wet the nipples. <laughs> I'm going to vomit. No, it's too late. <laughs> no, it's too late. You get past a, I believe we get past a certain point if the two don't work on it. We're, we're, we're like siblings. I cannot imagine at this point. We, I mean, I'm, I'm you talking. You live together. I still have my own apartment in Hell's okay. Kitchen, but I stay there I'm being every, almost every day. I, 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 I'm being, it sounds like I'm being really flip about it, and maybe I am, but we're so close. That's why I'm talking like this. That's why I sound mm. so harsh. Like, we, he has been with me. I was telling him to, before, like, I had oh, so God, much. Oh, God, say my name again. <laughs> what? 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 Wrong? Oh, it's so rare to hear it so beautifully done. Really? Oh, uh, really? Frank. Chemda. <laughs> Ah. I was telling her about all the death in my family. He's been through so much shit with me. Yeah, I went to Yale Drama School, and my dad was a janitor, and now I serve artichoke dip for a living when I don't uh, have spots. So that speech training really did well. I can pronounce your name. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad I bring up only good things for you. (laughs) Only good things. (laughs) What what kind of place? A restaurant? Uh, A place on the Lower East Side that I refuse to plug. (laughs) Yes. Yes. It's It's, yeah. Are you, are, you, what, are you trying to find mean. the craziest thing to name, like artichoke dip? Because they do have things <laughs> that's that That's kind of what them, they're right? known for. Okay. The thing is, I, I really... You guys, it's artichoke pizza, but they're everywhere. I have to, I have to not... Even, I shouldn't have even said that. I, I only do it about four times a month, so I should have no right to complain. It al- what? It allows me to do my stand-up, oh. so I only have to tend bar about four times a month, and that's that. So I shouldn't complain about something that's easy money. That no, me that's to... okay. I imagine your manager is a fucking asshole. I mean, you know, if I'm sitting there and I have 20,000 people in front of me screaming at me like the missiles are flying, and I see some gay manager in the middle of the floor who's acting like he sent the missiles because it's the first time in his life he's had any kind of authority, <laughs> but is buried on his iPhone with two-inch roots under his bleached hair, who was thrown into a locker his entire high school career because he's a raging homosexual who hates himself. You really paint a picture. <laughs> you should see how he Happy labels gay these pride. <laughs> you should see how he labels these people on the checks. <laughs> you ever see the, when those the make clientele, the news? Uh, they're my they're my people. The clientele saved me. 
honestly, like when there was so much loss in my family, people that come in to see a bartender, it's, I make fun of it and complain about it, but my God, it's like having company over. It's so much fun. Mm. Like they're not the enemy. The enemies are always the restaurant managers. You know, Keith, I, I did a waiter series on uh, a show I call, I host called What's My Name on the Keith and the Girl Network. Mm-hmm. You may have heard of it, the network anyway. Um, so <laughs> I, I interviewed people who were waiters for a while. And Keith uh, as well, I think you, you were a, wait, a waiter for like 10, 15 years, for right? A long time. I asked everybody, can a manager be a good person? No. I don't think one person said yes. Oh, and they yeah. all describe them as a person who has never had authority and now finally can get to have shit to say over somebody. Everyone describes them like that. Am I right? That's absolutely true. Wow. You wouldn't, even, you wouldn't pick that job if you were a decent person. Right. Ah. Wow. So weird, right? I wouldn't have pictured that for a manager of a restaurant. You, you would think that you would have to be a human being who gets along because you're literally like managing people's schedules. Um, I, I think that waiters are so flexible, uh, we were talking about it the other day. Please, can I have a day off? You won't have to pay me at all. Here's my friend who's willing to come in for me. We do the same job. Please, I love you. I mean, I remember when Let Hennessy... Let me think on yeah, it. Fuck yeah. you. Insane. Yeah. I remember when Hennessy used to ask for a day off and, like, no one's available. He used to start being like, please, I will give you $50 to take my yeah. shift. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Nuts. What other job do the employees have to cover their ass like that? Yep. That's crazy. Yeah, I had a call back for a television show, and everybody was afraid to cover my shift. Not here. This is 10 years ago because they were afraid of management. Nobody would cover my shift. I had a call back for a TV show. So I quit. Good for you. I quit. I had to. Yeah, I quit. good for you. And it was like that was the one, that was one divine synchronicity moment. I booked that job. So that's like a – that's like a – I don't know. It just felt like all was right in the world. Because one of, one of the things that you have to remember when you are dispensable to somebody – they should be dispensable to you too. Right. Like if that job would fire you for trying to get a day off, you should fire them right back when it's time. Right. You know, right. it, it's a tough call, of course, but you know that's why you have that job because fuck you. Right. Yeah, I got fired when I I needed off to do my once a year stand up show. Yeah. About ten yeah. years fired? ago. Fired. Fired. Why? And Just and the, you were getting called on a day you weren't um, you weren't uh, signed. For. I wasn't. I, I took off ahead of time. I made sure I wasn't scheduled at least. And yeah, I was called to come in. I couldn't come in on a day off. On a day off, and uh, he didn't like that. It showed uh, I had control of my life in That's a way. That's nuts. Yeah, it's such an it's conducive to such abuse that industry. It's crazy. I remember I was I was on tour. We were dating at the time. I was coming through at, at Irving Plaza. I think. You know, the biggest uh, venue I've ever done in New York, Keith couldn't get the day off to come see me. Wow. And we weren't in a position to be like, then fuck it. But to, in looking back, yeah. we should have just said, fuck I it. Know. Fuck you. We should be ready for that. But especially when you're younger or, even, you know, when you're older, you have that reason. When you're younger, you have that reason. Like, who's going to catch me? Or, you know, how am I going to get another job? But right. got to be ready to say fuck We you. all have those stories. You know, the, the oh, should have said fuck you stories. Yeah. Like, I just like, seriously, like when, uh, I think it was, I don't know, after like my folks died and I took like a week off. You what monster. The, what the fuck was I doing? Like going back to work that fast. I remember some woman, get me to whatever it was. I don't know. Not, I remember the cocktail was the name of the restaurant, their signature drink. So I don't want to say it because <laughs> I still do have to work. Get me two Manhattans and get it now. I thought she was kidding with me. Get me them now. <laughs> I think she was a woman who thought that I was some straight guy flirting with everybody else, and she was about 65. She thought I was ignoring her, but I was just four deep in people, and I remember I was so taken aback by how mean she was. I just wish that I had taken a little bit I, – I wish I had taken care of myself while I was going through loss because right, it's a but, really sick industry. It's sick. But in, in looking back, the only way to you know kind of feel better about it is that you were taking care of yourself as best you could. At because, the time, yeah. Yeah, because at the time, you couldn't also deal with not having a job. And that job might have saved right. you in terms of, well, it got you out of the house maybe, which starts you talking to people even though they're fucking assholes. You never know what will you know trigger the happiness and unhappiness. You're so much so. more evolved than I am. That's such a good way to look at it. But I also became like the manners police. Like in public, I, I, like for example, the day before yesterday at Starbucks, there was some Euro dude yelling at the kid working at Starbucks. What do you mean? You're, he was, you know, an Italian. You don't have, and the kid was really sweet to him. The kid was like, sir, I don't have any more 
I don't know, bold, whatever coffee at this. The guy just kept grilling him and drilling him. Mm. And I was like, there were five other Starbucks on 8th Avenue, man. You can just walk right down the street. Because mm-hmm. he was saying to the kid, don't give me an attitude after pounding the kid right. constantly. And then the man started to yell at me, which was fine. And then I got upset and I left and went to another Starbucks. There you go. I've done that. I'm just like, there's a customer <laughs> fucking yelling and I'm just like, yeah, you should really yeah. kill this waiter. I mean... <laughs> I love Look at that. this. <laughs> is that the wrong dressing? Ugh, this guy is a fucking he's trying to he, he's trying to give you the worst experience. That's the best. That's a great way to deal with it too. That's... Fucking asshole. What do you think this person is trying to do to you? My mother in law was walking my dog and forgot to bring a bag for the shit. So uh she's gonna have to come back to the house to get a bag. This is uh, down my block. But the guy, it just this he's he's always been an asshole and he he uh, sees the mother-in-law is like, well, then you have to pick it up with your hands. I, I okay. can't have to, et cetera, et cetera. So she, of course, does, and she comes back. I go out, and, and, and then he says, you know, your mother-in-law uh, just left the dog shit on the sidewalk. I said, I promise, next time she does that, smack her in the face. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, what? I'm like, you, you smack. I can't believe she did that. And then I walked away. <laughs> Shit's still there. It was two months ago. <laughs> it was 2007. Right. Uh, I see that there's an upcoming HBO series, High Maintenance. Right? There is, yeah. And you play Marco the Meth Addict. Yes. Now, do you write in your resume special skills? Math, <laughs> ski- skateboarding. I'm such a pansy when it comes to drugs. I mean, I've experimented with stuff. Right. But you no, bring not, your own, your high. I, don't, I like haven't done drugs two. in years. Actually, I smoked pot a few weeks ago for the first time in maybe seven or eight years. And? It was amazing. <laughs> amazing. I forgot how much fun it was. Because I wasn't a hog, and I didn't do like a fistful of it and then go eat a bag of Lay's and Chef Boyardee out of the can. I was subtle with it and took like one or two hits and relaxed. I, I, I grew, I matured with drug taking. <laughs> <laughs> I now relax with my drugs. I now relax with my fistfuls of coke. <laughs> when you get the job, do you, is it hard to, you can't go, yes, I've done that before, Matt. <laughs> like, I'll be the best at it, right? You got to just play it cool. Like, I'm an actor, I act. I do kind of think, like, I, like we all went to, uh, they rented out a theater for Michael Che's birthday and a bunch of us saw Goodfellas. Okay. There's no way Lorraine Bracco hasn't done Blow. I love calling it Blow. That's the, like, 80s right. bathroom stall. Gay bar thunders on Jericho Turnpike. Blow. She is, it's so, she's so truthful as an actor when she does coke in that movie. The need, like, when they get from destination to, de- to destination, they get to somebody else's house, somebody asks her a question, and she's like, yeah, uh-huh, I need a hit. And it just, that is so the way, it, the kind of, I'm glad that I've done it when it comes to, like, that actor thing, just to know what it feels like. I was wondering why she said, we cannot shoot out of order. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> That's how I act. Um, Hennessy did a short called Clean, the one that won the Icelandic Academy Award. And um, he showed his mom. And after his mom watched, she texted him. She goes, there's no way you didn't do cocaine in your life. Wow. Because he's doing cocaine in the, right. like, faking it, of course. Right. But his mom was like... Yeah, you've done that before. Nailed you, it. You didn't just, yeah, yeah, you nailed it. Yeah. I was method and just hoping one day I'd get the part. <laughs> I was meth id. Meth id. <laughs> now, I only did meth that one time. And it followed you all this life. Children, <laughs> are you it hearing was, this? Because it was so good. It's like only getting to try chocolate once and then remembering it forever. Mm. The gift that lasts a lifetime. Finding out you're allergic like everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Should meth be legal? Isn't it better that it's hard to get? Can you, you know imagine? You, you... Um, should meth be legal? Yeah, I think it'd be great to see schools close <laughs> and cities crumble and crime well, rising. When we say legal, we don't mean for five-year-olds. <laughs> we yeah, mean no, at a legal Camden, age. Meth should be legal. For, I need to say this to your listeners. Meth should be legal for everyone. <laughs> I just like that when we ask if drugs should be illegal, everyone goes to like, yes, 12-year-olds should do it. Um, <laughs> should gay marriage be legal? No. Oh, these pedophiles. Why are no. we always talking about children when legalizing shit like this? Please. Pretty soon they'll want to marry their parakeets. <laughs> Why do I have to push one for English? <laughs> <laughs> you voiced various characters in Grand Theft Auto Five. 
Yeah, I which, forgot about that. Which I didn't get to all your characters because I could not finish that game. I want to kill people. I want to steal cars. I don't want to get a haircut. I don't want to go on a date. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto Five. It's they have. There's all these side missions that you have to do. I can't steer that fucking car. Yeah. I just walk out of the hospital and start to like kick a pedestrian. That's all I can do. <laughs> <laughs> You should play your own job at some of these games. And then, like, as a bartender, you make the drink, but then you spill it on their face. And you shoot them between the eyes. <laughs> yeah. you. I can't play those games. They don't tip you, so you rob them. <laughs> this is a great idea. Danny, write this down. But I don't know who I am. I can't find myself in the game. Like, I know that we did something on a golf course, and there is the golf course, but I can't find me. I get you. You're talking to every character. I don't know who I... I don't know. I don't even really... I didn't really know... They don't tell you what it is when you record it. It's that motion capture. I had the flu. I had a jumpsuit with silver balls all over it. And they know if you go to the bathroom because they have to, like, readjust you. (laughs) Like, they know everything. They go, good for you. We had to readjust a lot. (laughs) And then you have to do, like, calisthenics so they can kind of film you and do all that crap. But they don't tell you what you're recording. They're just posters of cars all over the place. And That's so scary. <laughs> two by fours m- that are fake cars. Yeah, it is. You have to sign. The confidentiality stuff was unreal. Like, I'm probably not supposed to even say this, but it's old now. Yeah, like, can, can you touch your toes, but we'll fill in your character work later. Right. <laughs> You're the blow himself guy. Uh, this is on Facebook. Yes, I found the, finally some news on high maintenance. I'm on episode five of this kick-ass show. Look yeah. for its premiere on HBO. Love it. So happy for these guys. Also, there's a gay porn star in that episode, and we didn't become friendly at Not all. Not at all. I was invisible. No. First of all, when I say happy for those guys, um, Ben Sinclair and his wife, who was uh, Katya, who was the former casting director of 30 Rock, every, it's out of every set I've ever been on, new TV shows, they're always tense. There's inevitably somebody... There's always going to be, like I did Blue Bloods, which I'll never do again because I did it. But the guy who directed that show was a stuntman's son. And he was so, he was such an idiot. The way he was muscling me with this role, he was, in your, in your audition, you were so threatening. You were so, and I said, I had lines. Like, they were cut by the right. time I got there. The chick that was Natasha on Sex and the City, who's the lead, alluded to, she kind of called me fat. Like, the, the energy was toxic. On Mm -hmm. Blue Bloods. There's always, like, one on a set. Ice-T on um, SVU was giving me acting notes. Like Uh, what? Like, no, you just got news. Your mom's is dead. I didn't see you react. Like, like my eyes turned to cartoon X's. His breath was so bad. He was (laughs) right... Like I just, I'm thinking of like this actor training, and like then this guy is giving me notes that didn't even make sense. Or D'Onofrio on the set of Criminal Intent. Were you like, I went to fucking Yale? Yeah, for this. because it's kind of like it's not about really giving notes. It's like who can piss just a little bit further. It's territory. It's and it's re- like I remember the guy who played my dad on that episode of Criminal Intent was so sweet. He had been a lead on Archie Bunker's place years ago, and now present day back then. He was talking to Catherine Irby, who was the lead on Criminal Intent, who was pregnant. He was being so sweet to her. And you would have thought that she was talking to, like, a fan who was getting in her face. I wanted to say to her, he was where you are seven Mm -hmm. years ago. And this is going to be you in seven years. That's the way the business is. But my point is, with high maintenance, there was none of that. What what happened with D'Onofrio? Oh, my God. Okay. I was in a prison in Kew Gardens. Because I don't look white. So I always play those characters. And that's what they do to you if you don't look Caucasian. And they wanted to cram all of my scenes in that location in 24 hours. So I didn't see D'Onofrio until I was on that set for like 14 or 15 hours. And it was smooth and fine. D'Onofrio comes into a dry rehearsal 12 hours in, and the whole, all of the energy in the room goes <gasps> intense. 40 people get quiet. Everybody just gets uncomfortable and looks at the ground. He walks in smelling like a Burger King dumpster with a dirty T-shirt on. <laughs> And the director's like, um, Vince, you're going to sit here next to Frank. No, no, I'm not going to sit next to Frank. I'm going to walk around the, the table. Uh. Do. Everybody had to move their cameras around. It's like everyone else in the room is lucky to have two lines right. or to be putting makeup on somebody. Or like me, I've worked my whole adult life to play Richie Lamone, gangster son. Right. With, you know, it's, but it, the ego, and he gave me acting notes too. Like but they, what? He told me to take my time. It was my first big job, so his were actually pretty good. Okay. Like, I had my moment because of him. But my point is, on high maintenance, Ben Sinclair and Katya, it was the most collaborative, beautiful environment. They made it funnier because they let us do our thing. 
Like, they know that I'm funny. That's why they hired me. And they kind of, they keep it so supportive. They have no budget. And it's, it was the most, it's, it's got to do well because their energy is so good. They're good people. I really, like, I'm so happy that it finally did come out on HBO. It was supposed to come out last spring. So that's why I was like, I'm happy for you right. guys. But who's, what's the, who's the, oh, the gay guy? porn star? Yeah. I don't know. Colby something, some blonde dude who like, you know, you're always supposed to think that porn stars, you know, like their penis is rotting off with disease and that they live in an alley on you know 48th street, but he's flourishing. They all have some website where they sell like sexual, like the sexual experience in film. Like they're, they do it's some kind of sex thing that he's selling and right. he's like travels the world and. I don't know. Maybe he's a glorified prostitute, but I, I was like, I guess like a me porn writing star, a glorified prostitute. I mean, that's I forget. Isn't we that what the Google definition him. is? Colby Keller. I don't know what his business is. It's some sex thing. Colby Keller. Yeah. Okay. And I just, I guess I'm sour grapes because I wanted him to want to be my friend, so I could be like, oh, <laughs> here's a picture of me on Facebook with a porn star. We're friends, and I accept everyone, even though he's an escort. I have an escort for like I wanted him to want to be my friend, and honestly, I wanted him to want to have sex with me. So that's I'm being very honest. <laughs> <laughs> Sour grapes because the porn star didn't want to have sex with me. Would you have had sex with? Yes, him? in the fucking dressing room that they don't have money for at high maintenance <laughs> behind the curtain. <laughs> and so was he rude to you, or he just didn't... no, not at all. Just like you know, oh. he was totally nice and professional. Are you just being a dick? Right yes, now? I'm totally being a dick because oh, I wanted God. him to want me. There it is. It's out. <laughs> <laughs> That's I what it means. <laughs> yes, Robin Trowers. But, yes, Cheap Trick. But we didn't get friendly at all. <laughs> means he wouldn't fuck me. Because everybody. Well, yeah, basically. I mean, I haven't <laughs> bought them since like 2002, if you want to tell the truth. But, you know, I might have, you know, slept yeah, but, on a yeah, raincoat like, for Colby Keller. A short <laughs> list of who you would bought him for. <laughs> <laughs> he's on it. He's on it. If it ain't spit, it ain't love. What? Um, yeah. Uh, um, wait a minute. No, because everybody was gathered around him like it was Adele, and and it was it was like just, you. No, I stayed aloof and remained up to the side. Yeah, you seem aloof. I was staying in character. <laughs> Real cool, brother. I was there to do a job. <laughs> uh-huh, and, uh, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Very not distracted. I was staying in meth character. <laughs> just being Marco. a creep. <laughs> Newsy knows this guy, Colby Keller. I've been in love with him since high school. I want. Yeah. It's so gross how gay people talk. Yeah. It's <laughs> disgusting. Want. And they yeah. wonder why they get bed bugs. You know what's great? Straight guy talk. Oh, <laughs> only the most respectful, beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best. <laughs> uh, it's still Pride Month. I shouldn't have said that. MJG is saying, You were the voice in Grand Theft Auto V. Do you know who played the voice of Hooker I Killed Number 47? I loved her <laughs> vocal fry. <laughs> there, there were like 70 trillion people wearing those stupid <laughs> jumpsuits with balls on them. I, I don't know. Who anyone was. Uh, MJG is asking, was the guy really gay or just gay for the pay? No, he's, he's gay. He's I mean, if you, if you can't see his nose when he's buried in someone's butt, he's a homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> he's gay. Thank you. I finally know the gauge. <laughs> oh, this is such insider information. I sound like I'm being mean, but I am doing a benefit this evening for the people of Orlando, which is a good thing. Stand up New York. I sound like, like I do care. Oh, my God. I do care. That was the best. I feel like it was court ordered, but good for you. <laughs> you know what helps you? That you are gay. I know. I know. That's you're like, true. You're like, look at these queers. That's why we developed this edge. <laughs> Try I'll... doing stand up as a gay guy in front of a gay audience. That's an amazing thing. The supportive or the opposite? Ooh, like, I always say to people name three comics that have a huge gay following. Do it, Keith. Will you? <laughs> Um, Three comics, huge gay following, big. Female or male? Just whatever you can think of, but it has to be like a household, huge gay following. I can only name. think of female names. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'll do stuff that I polish for years, and I'll walk out there, and the arms are folded, and the eyes are looking at me like I, like I just stole their tuna fish sandwich. Yeah. What's her face? The fat comic who calls everybody terrible names and stereotypically fucking does her jokes. I don't understand. Lisa it. Lampanelli. Thank yeah, you. This yeah, is yeah. how we're going to work it. Lisa Lampanelli. The one from the D list with the red hair who curses Kathy on New Year's Eve. Kathy Griffin. We're so good at this. And uh, Margaret um, Cho. Ma- yes, Asian. <laughs> yes. Chelsea Handler. Oh my God. Like vodka. Oh my God. She's so funny. Lindsay Lohan's a drop, like that kind of shit. A woman walks out and goes, hey, and gets an applause break but the guys just stare at you what is it i don't know i really don't but i don't like i'm coming out on stage more now because of what happened last weekend i feel compelled to okay and when i see guys on logo it's it it makes me cringe all the time because they don't represent 
everybody. They represent like this small percentage of guys on logo, and it drives me crazy. Because they're so flamboyant. Because they're so flamboyant, and I'm I'm glad that they do represent flamboyant dudes. I'm glad they represent trans dudes. But like, re- I wish that they would represent somebody like me sometimes yeah. too. Like, I just if you're gonna paint a picture of it, paint a full picture. It it kind of drives me crazy. Yeah, I think um, most or all marginalized groups feel that way about TV. Absolutely. It's always it's always some stereotypical role. It's always a one one noted. Right. And again, you went to to school, you studied it, you've been doing it for right. years. And what role do you play over and over again? Mafia kid, mafia yeah. guy, criminal. And it's kind of like Bobby Cannavale will get the big part because there's one a year. Like mm. there's really. It's crazy, and I'll, I'll go in for, like, the little guy. But at this point, I have stand-up, so I'm grateful to get in that room for six lines. I'll get paid for ten years. <laughs> so how can I complain about that? But I do feel compelled to come out of the closet now on stage, and straight people are going to have to deal with it. I'll do Fuck them. Yeah, seriously, it's <laughs> really, after that whole thing. Good. It's just, it's, it's got to be culturally something's, I mean, if gay guys are just going to support Kathy Griffin and Adele and... I don't know, Lady Gaga, I'm going to be somebody who tries to get out there and show that we're more than just this one thing. Amen. Now, <laughs> now how, do you start, how do you start your shows now? Like, well, hey, guys. I'm- hey, so I was carrying my best friend's coffin, and um, <laughs> I thought, man, I got to work on my triceps. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a, yeah, I like that. <laughs> hey, let me mention this, sleep number beds. I have a oh. sleep number bed. It's fantastic. I adjust the the firmness on my side of the bed. My wife adjusts her f- firmness on her side. We both get a good night's sleep. How are you going to share a bed? Oh, my God. It's so intimate. Yes. Uh, my sleep number setting, if you're curious, 35. My wife's is 45. And you don't adjust it at the factory, and that's the end of it. You, you control it yourself. You want to get firmer. You want to get softer. I told you I have sex, and I, I switch it softer firmer, softer firmer, <laughs> as I'm fucking. It's a new experience. <laughs> fucking. Yeah. That's what the, uh, the salesperson told him to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's like, hey, I, off the record, uh, when I'm fucking. Oh, my God. He decided that that's how straight people fuck. <laughs> uh, my sleep IQ score out of 100 last night, 95. It tells you how good your sleep was, and it will say, oh, okay, at 3 in the morning, you were a little restless. Uh, here's what we do. How to set your bed so you get a perfect night's sleep. That's cool. Yeah, why not 100? Because I have a dog that a thing needs attention all the time. <laughs> anyway, you're lucky. Oh, my God. Now, oh come God. in during the lowest <laughs> prices of the season sale where a Broke queen sleep number C2 mattress is only six ninety nine ninety nine. How'd your dog break its neck? No, I know he had a heart attack. Oh, okay, good. Can, can we finish this thing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, sleep number's rating in. They're saying you're done. Don't worry about it. Come in during the lowest price of the season sale where a queen sleep number C2 mattress is only six ninety nine ninety nine. You can't afford another restless night's sleep. You can afford a sleep number bed. Sleep number beds and sleep IQ technology are only available at any of the 500 sleep number stores nationwide. Find one near, near you. Go to sleepnumber.com and be sure to tell them Keith and the girls sent you. And when you tell them Keith and the girls sent you, they'll show you how to do that trick Keith was talking about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they'll treat you real good, real nice. <laughs> right. Go sleep on. number. Just say, I want to know about the uh, special features and give them a wink. Yeah. Tell them to show you the Keith and the girl. The feature. Keith and the girl special, we yeah. call it. <laughs> By the way, Newsy's writing in uh, from Hor... Sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> I don't want to mispronounce this location. From Home and Horny, three exclamation oh. points. Lowell, welcome to the fold, Leody. Thank you. <laughs> I've been trying to be ungay gay for like 15 years. Ungay gay? Yeah, he's trying to do like not gay I get gay it. Gay I'm, I'm, I get it. Do you yeah. listen? Do you collect vinyl? <laughs> do you, can you send a picture? I'll be done in about 45 minutes. I'll place. He, sent, he just sent a dick picture to you. Didn't even know the address. It doesn't even fit on the screen. <laughs> I could see, you see this the happening. Shaft. Newsy, are you writing in because you're into this? <laughs> What's going on? He said he hasn't bought him in a while. That sounds oh good, I think. Uh, we asked and the, it's Liotti, so I have Newsy, Obamacare. get it together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not going to help if he doesn't, isn't saying your name right. <laughs> Uh, we asked the audience, would you sleep with someone knowing they are married? It was one of our polls. 60% say yes. Mm-hmm. They don't care. Mm-hmm. Who cares? Have yeah. You, have you been with married guys? Have I? Well, I am kind of a married guy now, and I'm... Right? <clears throat> yeah, I have. My first, actually. Yeah. You're f- the first time you had sex was with a married the guy? The first time I was with a man was with a married guy. You okay. knew? No. I was, I was young. 
I was young. I didn't know. The next day, I found I was a ring. Eleven. In... It was no. I'm kidding. Oh, no, I was like I was uh, going on eighteen, and I was devastated when I found out he was in like some eight year relationship. Oh yeah, man! Yeah, I was mortified. How did you find out? <clears throat> he told me after the fact. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, did you think that you were in a relationship? I mean, I was, you know, like, like you're not, like you're not done baking yet when you're that age. You got to be back in the oven to cook. <laughs> Those are my words of wisdom, there, <laughs> listeners. You're not done cooking yet. So yeah, I thought that you know, if you like kiss somebody, that meant you were gonna die together one day. Mm, mm. I didn't realize that as homosexuals, that one day might be tomorrow. <laughs> but <laughs> political. <laughs> I'm getting very political. Uh, uh, so everyone's reminding me that I have Newsy's dick pic. If you want to see that, so, Newsy, yeah, yeah, yeah. really. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We can wait after the show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Newsy says I haven't bought him in a while either. Well, one of you has to be on top, right? What you're are we both, gonna do arm wrestle. You're both fighting to get underneath the other person. <laughs> that could be fun. <laughs> or seem kind of rapey. Fetish. Arm wrestle fetish. Uh, we asked the audience, "Do you know the names of all your aunts and uncles?" Because I don't. I don't. 27% of our audience does not either. Really? Yeah. Do you? Like, how you mean, like, what general, like, the, the aunts and uncles? Just you're, my regular you're... aunts and uncles. My mom and dad's brothers and sisters. Dead, deader, deadest. Yeah, those aren't names, though. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the one is left. Of course I know their names. There's only, like, eight of them. That's a lot. There's two and six on the other side. How are they dying? Cancer? Age. J. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, no one was shot or anything like that. Right. It's just, yeah, just being old, crumbling away. Yeah, but some of them make it up to like the nines, like nine oh. That's a lot. I know, I know. I mean, it's not like a glamorous life. It's like a home somewhere on Long Island. Like peeing and shitting themselves, or yeah, yeah. Like I took, we took an uncle home on Easter, and there was this kind of like calvacate of wheelchairs surrounding the desk in the middle of the hospital floor. They're staring out into the nothingness. It's not fun getting to that age. Mm. Who's that star that was decapitated? Jane Mansfield had it right. You just die young and beautiful, and and it's over. That's it. Yeah, so good many life. words to live by I in know. this episode. I didn't realize the wealth of wisdom that I was yeah. going to bring into the studio <laughs> Thank today. Thank you. We are all much smarter. <laughs> Retweet all this shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> A nine-year-old Bronx oh. boy tried to hang himself because he was told he had to share his candy with his siblings. Oh, my God. Now, what do you do that? You, he, he took a shoelace, Ugh. tried to hang himself off his bunk bed because he was told to share his candy with his sister. Something else is happening. Or uh, there better be, right? There, ha- there definitely is because either something else is happening in the household or something else is happening in his brain where it's glitching to, to you know, make this into a more giant thing. What do you do? That? You're I mean, such a good person because you're right. Like right away, I was going to say like, I totally get it. I'm a binge eater. <laughs> I don't want to share my food with anyone, but you're like, there's something else going on in that house. You're right. You're such a good person. Thanks, Frank. That was a really tough one to crack. <laughs> After you save your boy, do you then make him share the candy? <laughs> Th- <laughs> or does he get all the candy now? Halloween becomes the worst holiday. You may keep the ones without the nuts. <laughs> the rest you have to share. Oh, Frank, you're such a good person. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> they are taking swimsuits out of the Miss Teen USA pageant. Boo. Oh, everyone's going to keep watching. What is it going to be, pasties? The organization <laughs> is, <laughs> oh, there's, oh, there's is right. ending swimsuit portion of the beauty pageant and replacing it with an athletic wear competition. Aha! Uh-huh. That's sports bras that's instead even, of bikinis. That's even sexier. You see these volleyball players? That's the kind of stuff they're going to wear. That's cool. I think that's the point, is that it's still going to be uh, a race to be the sexiest, most pretty. It doesn't matter. You're replacing it with sports. What, booty shorts are not sexy? What is not standing there and looking oh, at my body right, about right, it? Right. It's all It's not like they're the going to be playing sports. They're just right. wearing another costume, yeah. so to speak. That's true. Yeah, all of a sudden, everyone can play volleyball, and they right. have a tournament on stage. Like a Van Halen's <laughs> hot for teacher baseball uniform. Right. That's like a midriff and... Yeah. Yeah. They're Molly wearing crew. evening gra- gowns, but we still <laughs> can manage to look at their tits and ass. Don't worry about it, guys. They, they said we're. They t- won't ruin this for us. <laughs> we're still trying to find ways to get them to talk less. <laughs> now, one of the biggest challenges no! facing the United States is social and economic inequality. <laughs> How do we narrow the gap between the rich and the poor?
When it comes to social and economic equality, I think that the rich and the poor need to stop being... There should be a buzzer once they say, I think. ...economic equality. I think that the rich and the poor need to stop being so segregated. I think there is a middle class. I think that the rich need to... Oh. Take a breath. Oh. Is she still crying? Or would she just spread out of things? I think Panicking. that the rich need to be able to be giving. And I think the poor need to work hard. And I think the middle class need to come together and find an in-between. Thank you. Oh, uh, because you can hear all the prep work in her speech. I didn't know blow up dolls could talk. Where do you get those? <laughs> they sell them on 8th Avenue. <laughs> At the gas station. <laughs> A recent report shows that in 40% of American families with children, women are the primary earners, yet they continue to earn less than men. What does this say about society? I think we can re relate this back to education and how we are continuing to try to strive to figure out how to create jobs right now. That is the biggest problem. And I think especially the men are um, seen as the leaders of this. And so we need to try to figure out how to create education better so that we can solve I mean, this she's problem. proving thank it. You. Thank you, Utah. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, sweetheart. Yeah, thank you, dum dum. <laughs> I'm surprised that you dressed yourself, but you probably didn't. All right, Betty. New England Patriots quarterback Tom Brady was suspended for his part in a so-called deflate gate scandal, then instated by the courts. Legalities aside, did Tom Brady cheat? Did he cheat? Um, that's a really a stupid good question. question. I'm not oh. sure. I think I have to be there to see the ball and uh, feel. She should it. just say, "I think that's a stupid this question." This is such a stupid question. What? Do, why are you asking me this? I think that's a really good question. I'm not sure. I think I'd have to be there to see the ball and uh, feel what? it, and make sure it was deflated or not deflated. But um, if there was question there, then yes, I think he cheated. If there was any question to be had, I think that he definitely cheated, and there that he should have been suspended for that. That's it's not fair. Thank you. I'd be like, the dad from the Brady Bunch didn't cheat, because I don't know sports, because gay people don't know what sports are. Like, uh -uh, you're cheat. supposed to be the ungay gay. You can't say shit like that. Oh, yeah, that's right. I did mm -hmm. play baseball for a really long time. There you go. Mm -hmm. My what, uniform still fits. My uniform still fits. There yeah. you go. Ask him what it, looks, it, it means good. by he baseball. Looks a good boy, yeah. Hi. No, How kid. Can you please take a question? Good luck. Among the five senses, what do you prefer to have if you can only have one? It's a dumb one. question. Well, what should they ask? It's so them? stupid. Thank God they, they ask even these dumb questions. Wow. Would you like me to repeat? Okay. Thank you for that wonderful question. <laughs> if I have to pick out of five senses, I would pick seeing. Because seeing is the best sense that we can ever see because seeing mm. is believing. Oh, and believing yeah. into what you see is yeah. perfect. And um, out of all those senses, um, seeing <laughs> would really be wonderful because, thank you, that will be it. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, you can hear the giggle. Oh, that's fantastic. You know what I would say? The sixth sense. It's highly underrated. Right. It's, you, you get to have a third eye. I don't know if everyone's aware. Do you think that's these... That's extra eye shadow in case you're counting. I think these pageants are why women get paid less? No, but thank you for asking. That's a very good question. <laughs> I think... <laughs> And then we remember this classic. <laughs> Recent polls have shown a fifth of Americans no. can't locate the U.S. on a world map. Why do you think this is? I personally believe that U.S. Americans are unable to do so because uh, some uh, people out there in our nation don't have maps, and uh, I believe that our ed education, like such as in South Africa and uh, the Iraq, everywhere like such as, uh. and I believe that they should, uh, our education over here in the U.S. should help the U.S. Uh, or should help South Africa 
and should help the Iraq and the Asian countries. So we will be able to build up our future for our children. Thank you very much, South Carolina. You know what? As they're, as they're answering, I forget what the question was. Well, yeah, because it becomes about not the question at all. It's yeah. just kind of, that's like me having to listen to like an hour of some kind of hateful, hideous remixes. And like, it's titled like music of, you know, your gay Saturday night. And it's like this hideous remix of anything like that. In other words, it's kind of like, like hearing women in a beauty contest like that is like that last girl sounded like. I remember in like a music theory class I took, there was, you know, how a teacher every now and then would coddle the dumbest one. Like, see, Vanessa, you can do it. Cause they like figured out what a vowel was. Mm -hmm. It's like uncomfortable to like, to listen to someone that sounds well, because off. I think it's such as uh, the Iraq. No, uh, I think that they're, they're prepping them fucked up. They're not prepping them to truly understand the question and answer. They're prepping them with buzzwords, with, um, if they ask you about Iraq, you say it's these things. It's a wonderful things. question. Yeah, you always they start with it's a wonderful that, yeah. question. So mm. th they're prepping them to, to, to pick from an answer, but they don't know that answer. That's why they can't articulate it. They're just giving them certain sentences, and they're trying to match them up. It's do they a terrible... prep them with news? Like Tom Brady, do they prep them with news? If they ask them about Iraq, do, like, do they know what's going on? What if they don't know? They they prep them with potential questions and answers because what could they possibly ask? Like Keith said, there's 50 contestants. There's 50 headlines, right? That you could or you know popular right, 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 right. discussions that are happening right now. It's all. It's usually based on you know everything that is in the news right now. And by the way, take a bunch of 18 year old little boys, and I'm calling them little boys because it's very difficult as an 18 year old to to be a well-rounded human being, sure. you know, that, that is televised and put on the spot like that. I think that's, it's incredible to be able to do that. Um, and so take an 18 year old boy. How about the guys that we interview after their stupid fucking baseball game? <laughs> uh, I just want to, first of all, God is the best. My mom shouts, hi mom. I just want, I'm just happy to be here. Uh, they prep those guys too. just say nice things and move on. And when they don't say those three sentences, they get themselves in trouble. I want to beat women. I mean, uh, what was, and they look at their hand. What was it? Uh, they're all stupid. Why are we listening to 18 year olds about such the Iraq? <laughs> Do you Thank think you, we should Thank follow you. the people? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thirty years go by. Where are they now? And you ask them the same question. I. Th you know what? Yes, because in thirty years, if you don't pick up on something, then you get shot. Otherwise, you get a very pretty crown. Whether you're a football player or you know Miss America, it doesn't matter. But you know, 18... going back real quick, did you say? <laughs> Never mind. The I got a little passionate. Never mind. In the other martyr. words, bitchy. <laughs> uh, before that, that it's hard what these people do. Yeah, I think it is hard to be an 18-year-old on display like that. Yeah, no matter what your display is, yes. Yes. Yes, you have one talent if you're lucky in this world, right? So maybe your talent is walking straight in heels, looking pretty, smiling nice. That is a talent. Not a lot of people look like that. But you also but you can't answer the questions. You can't sing. You can't represent people in this. But it's, it's, it's a well-rounded talent. But it's not happening. They're 18 years old. I don't think I know what talent means. Talent? I guess not. I mean, it's hard to say because I like my instinct was to say, yeah, but that's not God given. They didn't do anything to be beautiful like that. But then I think as somebody, they put in the work. They put in the work. You, it, even right, if you're that's born my point. pretty. That's yeah. my point. I'm agreeing with you. Then yeah. I think of someone who is this piano. What's the word I'm thinking of when somebody prodigy? Like a, prodigy at four. It's just this kind of freak-like thing that someone can play a Bach concerto yeah, like that when they're four years old. Well. But then they have to put in the work. Yeah. So I guess, you know, maybe it is some kind of talent. If anything, it's a, certainly a talent that I would love to have. Would, being pretty? Being pretty. Being, yeah. It's a, it's a leg up in this <laughs> world. It's a total sure. yeah. leg up. It's, yeah. you know. That when it comes to talent, instead of studying comedy, why didn't I study pretty? I made the bad choice. Now I got to work every day. You, know, you can still go to beauty school. There's no age cut off. <laughs> I think there's a look cut off. <laughs> <laughs> but they can't be. They can't do a special like you can. There is a talent right, to being they funny. Can't. No, of course, that's what I'm saying. But there's there's a talent to what they do. I, I do. I see them on stage. I'm like so talented. <laughs> I, I compare that some of them to Prince sometimes. So much talent. This person wrote me, Lynn, and uh, we we wrote on Facebook. Hey, within the next hour. Give us your address. We're going to send you Keith and the Girls stickers. And she wrote stickers in the subject line. 
and please and thank you, smiley face. Yeah. So I said, we'll I'll find you. Yeah, I'll guess at your address every day until it gets to you. Thanks, Keith. <laughs> She wrote back, smart ass, LOL. I just figured it would be in the message and then repeat her email address. Oh. oh. Let's send her a sticker like on Facebook. I said, I'm emailing you stickers. Am I on candid camera? <laughs> <laughs> this is, you know how many emails Keith owes me, but he'll write this bitch back about her free stickers that she's, she's never going to get, obviously. She said, oh, fuck me. Like my real address. Maybe I should rethink this whole technology thing. <laughs> And then I got the address. We love you. Now, what do you think her talent is? <laughs> Probably she's an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> what? Do, where does she live? What's the state? San Diego. Oh, God. <clears throat> Making her husband feel important. It's very Republican, isn't it? San Diego? Very really? Republican. Oh, it has such a nice vibe. How could that be? I know. Wow. I know. Uh, Frank Liotti. Yeah. He's on Twitter. Frank underscore Liotti. That is so. On Instagram, at Frankaholic. Mm -hmm. That's like just making fun of your friends who have real problems, right? <laughs> it's for my male fan base, Keith. Mm. Uh, my huge male. <laughs> <laughs> Follow him at frankliotti.com. Find out uh, when his stand-up shows are. Get a heads up on what uh, TV shows are coming out. If these aren't on the website, get to it, because that'll look silly. All right. Now, we also narrowed down. The bar that you work at, it's a bar in Lower Manhattan. <laughs> they serve artichoke dip. They serve Manhattans. They have a signature drink. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we got, I got some videos on Facebook with Jessica Curse, and my Facebook page is open, and they've gone kind of viral. All right. Me. Facebook.com slash Frankaholic. Frankliotti. Sorry. Who? Yeah, that's fine. I think it's Frankliotti on Facebook. I don't okay. think it's Frankaholic. Right? It's not. Okay. We're oh. always right, guests. <laughs> we're <Sorry>. always right. <laughs> I know it's your name and your site, but if you can trust us, sorry. even if you think we're saying your name wrong, we're not. I'm Let sorry. it go. I'm probably correct. I'm sorry. Happy Gay Pride. Well, thank you. Thank you. It is your month. I'm going to let that go. You guys, if you like this show, don't forget July 4th, people will be wearing out their KTG stickers, their T-shirts. So if you have it, if you have the sticker, if you have the T-shirt, a hat, something, wear it out on July 4th. Maybe you'll run into another fan. Also, if you like the show, if you like this episode, please share it. We have an easy link for iTunes. KeithandTheGirl.com slash iTunes. You can find us on SoundCloud. Anywhere podcasting happens, please spread the word and let people know. We love you.